Hey guys and welcome back to another Django tutorial. So in today's video what we'll be doing is talking about logging in and authenticating users. I will also show you how we can only restrict uh, pages so that users that are logged in can see them. So for example we maybe don't want a user that's not logged in to be able to create a new to-do list or because that probably won't work. Uh, so how we can do stuff like that. And then in the next video, what we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing is talking about creating a custom user model, which means that we can add things like all of our to-do lists to a specific user so that each user has their own to-do list. And when they go on the website, they're gonna see different to-do lists, not just all the ones that have been created by any user. That's what we'll be doing in the next one, but this one will just be logging in, validating and logging out as well. So what we actually need to do first of all when we're going to be logging in and logging out is we need to create those login and logout pages. Now luckily for us Django actually does a lot of this work for us. They have a built in application and if I show you in settings.py here that is Django.contrib.auth and what this does is it authenticates users. So we've done all the hard work of creating new users, but now since we've done that, Django can actually authenticate those for us. So we can use some of the built-in things in this application to do that for us. So the first step uh, in what we wanna do is we actually wanna use some built-in pages that Django's made. So they actually have made logout, login, um, what is it, change password, like a ton of different pages like that that we can access uh, simply by linking to them in our URL patterns from our main URLs file inside of my site. So what I'm going to do, just like I've done to get into my other applications, is I'm just going to say path, and in this case include, but in here I'm going to say uh, django.contrib.auth.urls. And I believe that's correct, but I will check that quickly to make sure I didn't mess that up. Uh, yes, so that's correct. So what this will do now is it'll go to this application, it'll look in the URLs file there, and we'll see if we have a valid URL. So if we have login, logout, change password, create password, uh, a bunch of those different pages. Right now we're just going to work with login and logout, but you know what I mean. So that's what that'll do for us. But the thing is, these uh, views, if we try to go to them now, they actually don't exist. So what those templates attempt to do or what the views attempt to do is render a template called login.html, logout.html from a specific folder that we need to create. So what we actually need to do, and it doesn't really matter where we do this, but I'm going to do it from inside of my register application. So inside of templates, I'm going to create a new folder. And in here, I'm going to call this registration like that. Um, now it's important that you spell registration correctly like I just misspelled it registration because it's going to look for this specific folder. So we're going to create a registration folder inside one of our templates folder and then in here we're going to create a new uh, HTML file and we're going to call this login.html. Now this is going to be where Django will look uh, and what template it will use to render our login form. So what we'll do is we'll simply just do what we've done before. So we'll start by extends um, and then in this case main slash base.html and then we'll add our blocks for our title and for our content. So let's do that now. Uh, block title and then we're going to say end block like that. And then I guess we can do the title. We'll just do a login here or something like that. And then, you know, what? I can just copy this and we'll just change the name to content. And now we're just going to create a nice form in here that will display our form just like we've done probably four or five times by now. So we'll say form. We're going to say method equals in this case post. And then we're going to say class equals in this case form hyphen group. Now we can end our form like that. And then inside of here, we'll add our CSF our token or whatever that is csrf underscore token and we will simply display our form now i want to add this to be a crispy form so it looks a bit nicer so to do that we'll have to load in our crispy tags so we'll say load and in this case crispy underscore forms underscore tags I believe that's the correct way to do that. If you don't have crispy forms installed, go back and watch the last video because we did that there. And then what we'll do is we'll add a filter here and we'll say as the filter, we'll just say crispy and this will display a nice form for us. Now we also need to add a button into our form because that doesn't come with it. So to do that, we'll say button, we'll say type equals in this case, submit. And then I guess we'll say class equals 
btn btn hyphen success and end our button and just say login as the name sweet so that should be it for this login form now we actually may want to add one more thing because sometimes you go to a login page it says well rather than logging in like create an account if you don't have one so maybe we'll add that in here quickly just make things look a bit nicer so we'll just add i guess some p tags and i'll just say slash p and i'm gonna say don't have an account question mark create one and then i'll add an a tag which will just link to our create so i believe it was slash register we did was it slash register or slash create that was that url let's check inside of where is it here uh register register is the name awesome so let's go back here register and we'll say here and then slash a sweet so that should actually be it for the login page and now we can actually go ahead and run our server which i already have running and we will see that the login page is actually working so this is the logout page let's go to login and see what we get slash login um oh well if you spell extends incorrectly extends there you go <laughs> then it won't work now let's try it if i refresh this here there we go so now you can see that we actually have a nice login page and this took us all of what uh six minutes to create so it's pretty straightforward and what will actually happen here is this will properly do our logins and validate users for us so let's try to log in this is a valid login right now password one two three four when i click login you can see that uh it's actually directing me back to the home page now the reason that this is happening is because uh i actually have something added down here in my settings.py file that i forgot to like resave uh, that was telling us to redirect that page but let me just refresh this let me go back to login and do this again because i want to show you what happens if you don't have that uh you can see that it brings us to this no page not found, which is probably what you guys were getting when you're running this. Now that's because what happens is when we try to log in, it's going to automatically attempt to redirect us to a page called accounts slash profile. Now we obviously haven't created a page or a URL for accounts slash profile. So what we need to do is we need to modify where we're going to go once we log in. Now the reason it was happening for me is because I had, I had done that previously and forgot to save removing it. But let's go inside our settings.py file inside of our my site and let's add a redirect to let's say the home page whenever we log in. So to do this, I'm going to say in this case, log in underscore redirect underscore URL equals. And in this case, you can pick wherever you'd like to go, but I'm just going to do slash uh, standing for obviously the home page. So let's do that. Now let's rerun and try to log in. And well, we will see that we should be directed directly to the home page. Once we log in, let's do that. And you can see we are brought to the home page. So that's awesome. Now I'm just going to quickly move this up uh, one because I don't like how that looks. Let's put this P tag just above here. And now I want to refresh this and that looks a little bit better to me. So sweet. That's how we log in. Now let me show you what's actually happening in the back end when, or how we can validate if we're logged in or not, because right now there's not really any way for us to tell whether or not we're logged in or we're logged out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually all the way back into my main application into templates and base.html. And I'm going to create a, th a thing that essentially only shows our main content uh, body. So like this block content, if we are logged in, otherwise it will tell us to log in and it'll leave a link that says login. So a way that you can actually tell if a user is logged in or not is by using what's known as user dot is authenticated. So I can actually create a code block here and I'm going to make this an if statement. I'm going to say if user dot is underscore authenticated authenticated. I think I spelled that correctly. So what this does is by default, whenever you go to a web page in Django, it has a user attribute, which stands for the current user. Now, if there's no user um, signed in, I believe it defaults to what's known as an anonymous user. So if you call user dot is authenticated on the user, if it is a valid user that's properly signed into the web page, then this will return true. If it does not return true, then the person is not signed in. So essentially, I only want to show this content block for all the different pages that I have if we're logged in. Otherwise, I want to ask the user to log in or even maybe redirect them to log in. So what I'll do here 
is now I'm going to put an else statement uh, that'll say essentially else. <laughs> so if you're not logged in, what we'll do is we'll literally just put an a tag and you, you guys can obviously make this look a lot nicer than I'm going to do. And we'll just link it to the login page and we'll say uh, log in here and you can just click this whole thing and that'll you know what actually let's put this in a p tag make it look a little bit nicer slash p and instead of having the whole thing be a link we'll just do login here all right so now we will hopefully redirect to the login page and the last thing i need to do before i forget is just end this if block so we'll say end if and there we go so let's now go back and let me go to home and i don't think i'm currently logged in but we'll see and okay so it is i am currently logged in so what i want to do actually is just log out so log out brings us to this logout page right that just says thank you for logging out this is the default logout page i'm going to show you we can change that in just a second so now let's go back to the web page and let's just go to the home page and you can see that now that i'm not logged in it says log in here if i click this um Oh, okay. So that is actually an issue. So what's happening essentially is when I go to the login page, since we're not logged in, it's not showing the login page because that's the block content. Uh, so <laughs> this is probably not the best way to do it, but this is how you can tell if someone is authenticated. So maybe actually let me remove this. Um, yeah, <laughs> because it won't let us log in if that is there. So let, we'll remove this for now and just leave it as block content. But that shows you guys how you can restrict kind of page access to people that are logged in. So obviously on certain pages, you might want to add that if statement so that it's showing different stuff based on if you're logged in or if you're not logged in. But that is essentially kind of how you do log in and log out. I'll really quickly show you how to change the logout page if you'd like to do that. So same thing as kind of changing the redirect here for login. So all we'll do is we'll just literally copy this and change this to log out uh, underscore redirect dot URL. And then here we can just define whatever page we want to go to when we log out. So if you had created a logout template, you could go to that. You could go to essentially whatever you want. But just by doing that, I'll just leave it as a home page for now. Uh, but you know, you get the idea. So I guess the last thing I'll show you is let's say that you are create some URLs inside of your new application. So maybe we go, we have a URL and we have to create. So let's go to the create page for a second. Uh, I actually want to go to views. My apologies. If we want to get the user from with within code, we don't want it just inside of the HTML file. What we can actually do is we can type response dot user. Now, when you do response.user, that will give you the user and you can run dot is authenticated. You can get all the attributes of the user, like the name, the password, the email, all that stuff directly from the code. And then obviously you could pass that into uh, the context of the page or you could do whatever you need to do with it from the back end. So I figured I'd show you how to do that quickly. So anyways, that has kind of been it for logging in and logging out pretty straightforward. In the next video, we'll create a custom user model and we'll talk about how we can modify that model to add attributes like all the to-do list to a specific user. So anyways, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.